Alex Rodriguez, the player who would restore integrity to baseball's home run record. That's what the story claims. Admitted Monday to using performance-enhancing drugs himself. The All-Star third... Can you believe that? The All-Star third baseman said in an interview with ESPN that he used steroids with the Texas Rangers for three years, from 2001 to 2003, in an attempt to justify his status as the game's highest paid player after signing a 10-year, $252 million contract. And here's what he said. Back then it was a different culture. It was very loose. I was young. I was stupid. I was naive. And I wanted to prove to everyone that, you know, I was worth, you know, $252 million! Say it! And being one of the greatest players of all time. He never said it, actually. I had to put it in. He said he quit steroids after 2003, the first of his three American League MVP seasons, because he said, I've proved to myself and to everyone that I don't need any of that. He was traded to the New York Yankees before the 2004 season. Now, I, I think it's interesting that he says he quit right before he went to the Yankees. Simply because uh, he knows what kind of uh, criticism... And vulgarity he'll face in New York if he played for the Yankees while he's using the steroids. They will kill him. They'll murder him. Says here the admission came two days after Sports Illustrated reported on its website that Rodriguez was among 104 names on a list of players who tested positive for steroids in 2003 when testing was intended to determine the extent of steroid use in baseball. The results were subject to discipline and were supposed to remain anonymous. Rodriguez said, when I arrived in Texas in 2001, I felt an enormous amount of pressure. I felt like I had all the weight of the world on top of me, and I needed to perform and perform at a high level every day. And I did take a banned substance, and, you know, for that I'm very sorry and deeply regretful. And although it was the culture back then, and Major League Baseball was very... He never said very what. I just feel that, you know, I'm just sorry. I'm sorry for that time. I'm sorry to fans. I'm sorry for fans in Texas. It wasn't until then that I ever thought about any substance of any kind. Rangers owner Tom Hicks said the admission caught him by surprise. By surprise. Uh, in a conference call, Hicks said, I feel personally betrayed. I feel deceived by Alex. He assured me that he had far too much respect for his own body to ever do that to himself. I certainly don't believe that if he's now admitting that he started using when he came to the Texas Rangers, why should I believe that it didn't start before he came to the Texas Rangers? The 33-year-old Rodriguez ranks 12th on the career list with 553 home runs, including 52, 57, and 47 it is three seasons with the Rangers. He has now 209 home runs behind Barry Bonds' record 762. Now it says here he's on top of a much different list. The highest profile player to confess to doping, joining teammates Jason Giambi and Andy Pettit. Unbelievable. Finally, he said, it was such a loosey-goosey era. I'm guilty for a lot of things. I'm guilty for being negligent, naive, not asking all the right questions. And to be quite honest, I don't even know what exactly the substance was I was guilty of using. Totally amazing. Now, this guy's still playing. In fact, the New York Yankees are stuck with him for another nine years. And, uh, you know, of course... That could be a good thing. Obviously, the guy has uh, one of the best batting averages in the American League, one of the best in baseball. He will have um, among the most home runs, among the most RBIs, probably for most of those nine years. That's probably the case. Having said all that now, 
I mean, um, do you have any respect for this guy at all? Or conversely, and I know there are a lot of people who feel that way. There are many people who, you know, smoke weed and they do other drugs routinely. Well, they have done other drugs routinely. And people think steroids are not a big deal and they don't really care. The statistics in baseball don't really mean that much anymore. There are a lot of people who say that uh, everybody's slavish devotion to statistics is kind of old school. Who really cares? I mean, um, I must say that uh, in baseball myself, as much as I enjoy watching baseball, uh, that a long time ago I gave up on the statistics meaning anything because you've had all these morons who uh, have used steroids and because Major League Baseball for years did nothing to stop it. Nothing. They didn't care. The result is I care less than I used to. How do you feel about this? Tom Likis. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likis. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likis Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Jay on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey Tom, first time, long time. Thank you. Um, I just want to say really quick how you know how we were all crucifying Jose Canseco, how he was wrong, he was a steroid user. Man, everybody you said used steroids looks like they do it. And um, what I'm saying is, out of all this whole steroid issue, he's the only one who told the truth. And he's the one that is the most, uh, the one that nobody likes. And it seems like he's the only one that tells the truth. I mean, A-Rod uses it, Pettit uses it, Roger Clemens. These are all named athletes, high-profile athletes that confess to it and that Jose Canseco actually said do this, do it does steroids. And he was right. Yes, I mean, uh, the only thing Jose Canseco was guilty of was violating the sanctity of the clubhouse uh, which, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is not a law in reality. And uh, this is something that goes back, uh, in fact, it goes back to about 1970, when a guy named Jim Boughton, who was a pitcher for the New York Yankees in the 1960s, wrote okay. a book called Ball Four. And in Ball Four, he told how Mickey Mantle was drunk, and Billy Martin was a drunk who liked to fight, and uh, about how Mickey Mantle played with a hangover, and people went crazy back then. And it was the first time anybody had ever written a book about what really goes on in the clubhouse. Uh, and uh, we, of course, have heard also this winter about Joe Torre, the manager of the Dodgers, who has written a book along with a guy named Tom Verducci, a reporter for Sports right. Illustrated, right. Uh, about his years managing the Yankees. And they talk about whether he violated the sanctity of the clubhouse. But... It, come on. You know, it's one thing to, uh, you know, not tell on your friends who are cheating on their wives. Okay, I'll buy it. But when somebody is either A, violating the rules of the game, or B, in the case of A-Rod, these were not rules of the game at the time yet, but it certainly was against the spirit of the game, and the guy lied about it on 60 Minutes and other places. I and, mean, he, uh, he, he out and out lied about it. Now I mean, he's sorry about it? The, the one thing, the one person that's really happy about this whole A-Rod situation is Michael Phelps. I mean, the, you know the man is probably like, yes, thank you, A-Rod, you have bailed me out. Ain't nobody talking about no Michael Phelps no more. We must talk about A-Rod. That's it. He got bailed out really quick. Yeah. Yep, you're right about that. Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. You know, Tom, what's ridiculous is that I have a, a coach for one of my daughter's teams for uh, softball and He's like in his mid forties, and he said, "You know, back back when the ratings were down, they had to strike back before baseball needed a, a shot in the arm to get people excited about it." And McGuire and Sosa started it with the Roys, and he said it had to be done. The owners knew about it, but they had to get people in the seats again. And now that the years have passed, Barry Bonds has made it all bad and evil. The, the owners are throwing the players under the bus when they know for a fact 
it was going on. But they were excited. People were watching McGuire and Sosa hit the home run. Well, I, I, by the way, I'm not convinced that they quote unquote knew about it. What I am convinced about is that they had heard about it. They had heard people talking about it. And they chose not to know or not to find out about it and not to do anything about it. Well, they knew it. I mean, uh, I mean the, the thing is that they, it's all about money. And it's what got everyone excited. Bonds got, you know, passed the record. Everyone's just excited. And now that that thing has gone off, is, uh, the attendance levels are back what they used to be at. Now let's clean everything up. Everyone questions. I mean, you look at uh, all of these players in question. His build before he went to the Rangers. I mean, he looks just like a... Very bonded with the Pirates. I mean, the guy was just a twig, and now he is where he is. Alex Rodriguez, the same thing. But it's all about money, and now the owners are wrong for what they're doing, too. Now, there's no doubt about it. Uh, the owners were wrong to ignore this. The owners were wrong not to institute uh, drug testing a long time ago. Uh, the owners were wrong not to make this an issue. The last time there was a labor dispute, they were wrong. They were wrong, and they ruined it, essentially. Uh, although baseball is drawing more than ever, uh, we all know it's no longer in the hearts and minds of most people the, the, the favorite sport of Americans. It's not. You know, Tom, the only way, if you can, you know, I'm just so angry. I, can you please take me out Bill Riley style because I need to hear him yell and scream. Bill O'Reilly style. Here you go. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. F***ing thing sucks! It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here is Tony on the Tom Likey Show. Hello. Um, Tom, Hi. how are you? I love Good. you, man. Thank hey, you. listen, uh, uh, prior to 1992, steroids were not illegal. And uh, these guys were taking them like crazy. If, if the owners didn't see it, I mean, you can tell when somebody's on steroids. I took them for years, and... Uh, and believe you me, they helped. They helped tremendously. Uh, yeah, but uh, really, before 1992, I do not believe that baseball players knew as much about steroids and were using steroids as much as they did in the 90s. Um, this really got going in the 90s. And I think Barry Bonds is a good example of it. I mean, whether he admits to taking steroids or not, the guy looks like a completely different person. He's a pumpkin head now. Right. I mean, it, it does, let me, does not look like the same this, person. Tom. Let me ask you this. If your son had the potential to become a, a professional a athlete and sign for multi-million dollars, uh, would you blame him or would you encourage him or maybe even just look the other way? I would encourage him not to do it for the following reason, that no matter how many millions of dollars you can make, uh, steroids can cause all kinds of physical problems up to and including death. We all know that uh, Jason Giambi, uh, for example, uh, had um, what was the, what was the issue? His kidney, his liver. He had some problem uh, uh, that was in some way uh, it was theorized could be due to uh, steroid use. He was physically in trouble for a couple of years, and his production went down to practically nil with the right. Yankees. Well, he was, it, he know, was never the same after that. As long as you're being monitored by a by a qualified doctor. Um, yeah, I think it, it's okay to take them. But as soon as they made them a Class three uh, drug, in other words, a prescription drug, that, that just threw everything uh, into the black market. And, and these guys, that's why Belco came up. They were trying to hide everything. Yeah, but the point is, look, if you needed a, you just said people should be using them under the uh, supervision of a qualified doctor. Making them a prescribed drug is not the problem. The problem is... Uh, when you uh, leave it in a gray area as to whether they are legal to use or not use. That's, yeah, you're right. You're right there. Uh, I mean, if you, out, look, so if you're going to have your if you're going to have your players using steroids, make an announcement. Our players are on steroids. They use them under a doctor's care. Uh, we regulate that. Okay, so don't be surprised somebody hits eighty home runs. Right. Well, take me out, Kobe style, Tom. Thank you. Okay, Tony. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Alex Rodriguez now admits he used steroids for three years. He admits it. A Rod admits it. He said on ESPN that he has used steroids. 
uh, in three years that he played for the Texas Rangers before he came to the New York Yankees before the 2004 season. So in 01, 02, and 03, he was using steroids. He said it. Now, everybody criticized uh, Roger Clemens for appearing to have used steroids and not saying it. Rafael Palmero, another ball player with over 500 home runs, will never be in the Hall of Fame. He went to before Congress and pointed his finger, pointed his finger at them, saying he had never used these performance-enhancing drugs. He, eh, how dare you? Eh, eh, eh. And then, uh, of course, we know what happened later on. So uh, now you have Alex Rodriguez. He says, oh, yeah, by the way, I use steroids. Now, he had, he had well, I, I guess he did have a choice. He could have stonewalled like Barry Bonds or some of these other guys. But no, he said, yeah, I used them. I mean, would you prefer to know or not know? And now that you know, do you have any respect for this guy? That's the question. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. Well, you got you caught you struck a nerve with this one because baseball players are entertainers like clowns, comedians, the Rolling Stones. I don't care what drugs they're on. If the Stones are on coke and they entertain me, I'm good with it. If Barry Bonds takes steroids, I'm good with it. He hits a bunch of home runs. I really don't care. They're just to, they're just there to amuse me like like entertainers, like jugglers or or and something like that. And people make a big deal out of these guys. Well, part of the problem with baseball is that people who were fans of baseball going back to the generations have been fans of the statistic. And, of course, when Babe Ruth hit 714 home runs, there were no steroids. Uh, people, were not, people were not using crystal meth. They were not using cocaine. Uh, not in that kind of uh, uh, quantity. and not uh, it, 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 You just never heard about it. So when somebody breaks that record, people say, well, hey, shouldn't they be playing under the same conditions as Babe Ruth? I don't care personally what records they've broken. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big baseball fan, and I'm kind of a baseball traditionalist. But as I get older, and now I, I just want to be entertained. When I go see Manny Ramirez or Randy Johnson or Roger Clemens, I want to see them perform. And if Roger Clemens has to you know, shoot some kind of drug to strike out 18, I'm cool with it. Um, so if somebody hit 120 home runs in a season, that's fine with you? I would be there for the 120. That would be something we'll never see in our lifetime. But I will say this. I saw Mark McGuire about two years ago at a golf course in San Diego, and he looked like Mickey Rourke does now. He looks like a bag of bones. I have a son who just got finished playing high school football, and I wouldn't allow my son to take steroids. And we had him drug tested by the school, and I did a few random. Somebody I love, I wouldn't want them to do it because I know it's harmful. But for clowns and entertainers like athletes, I could care less what they do. Do you care if Mick Jagger smoked a joint before he goes on stage? I don't, but at the end of a concert, they don't quantify his performance with statistics. So it's a statistic thing with you. So you're, you're saying it's I'm not saying it is with me. I'm saying I think that's why people get upset. I, I mean, look, let's, let's think about this for a second. One of the things about baseball is that people talk about how, well, my dad took me to a game, and then my grandfather and I went to a game, and then my grandfather went to a game with his father, and uh, they went to this stadium, and then that stadium was torn down. They went to that stadium. and So it has to do with memories, and it has to do with comparing players of one era to players of another era. Uh, it's more that way in baseball than any other sport. I agree so, completely. I, I was there when Brett got his 3,000 hit at Angel Stadium with my oldest son, who was about 10 at the time, and it was an exciting time. But Right. But how can you compare I, George I, Brett, who, for as far as we know, didn't use any performance-enhancing drugs, and George, Alex George. Rodriguez, who effortlessly just keeps hitting 335 every year? Well, uh, you, you know, when a shortstop hits 50, uh, 50 home runs, that kind of raises my eyebrows. But I never, I, I just don't care anymore. Maybe, maybe I, when I was younger, I cared. I don't have the passion that some of these old oh, babe had. Seven fourteen is a sacred number, and three hundred wins is a sacred number, and a hundred RBIs in a year is a sacred number. You know, I, just, I guess as I get older, I just don't give a crap about these guys. And if they're willing to destroy their bodies, because I saw Mark McGuire, he is a bag of bones. He looks now, like. Now, let me ask you a question: Do you care about the Hall of Fame? That's a good question. Um, um, not anymore. I okay, because Mark people. McGuire is not going in. Mark McGuire couldn't get in. He couldn't get in if he bought a ticket. He Barry get Bonds is not going in. Period. I agree. 
So what's happening is uh, somebody is making these decisions based on whether people use drugs. So, so we're drawing a line of steroids, though, because you know baseball has been a pretty forgiving sport. We could all remember Ron Lafleur. He, I think, he was in jail for murder, and then he got to play in the big league. So we're going to play in the big that. leagues, but he's not in the Hall of Fame. No, I agree, but but baseball has been very forgiving. If you can if you can hit thirty home runs a year, or you can throw a ninety five mile an hour fastball, it's looked the other way, Dave. And if Alex Rodriguez wouldn't have got caught, he would have never said anything. That's the that's the joke about it. I mean, he's known this for what six years now, eight until, until his name came out. He was just tooling along, banging Madonna whenever he felt like it, and life was good. Now you know, now he's he's a big everything he's done is going to be questioned, and I just don't care. All right, Steve, thank you for the call. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas Likas Show. Show. When I arrived in Texas in 2001, uh, I felt uh, an enormous amount of pressure. I felt like I had all the weight of, of the world on top of me, and I needed to perform and perform at a high level every day. Um, back then, it was a different culture. Um, it was very loose. Uh, I was young. I was stupid. Um, I was naive. And, and I wanted to prove to everyone that, you know, I was worth, um, you know, and being one of the greatest players uh, of, of, of all time. Alex Rodriguez on ESPN. Admitting he used steroids for three years. That's what he's admitted to. God only knows how long he actually used steroids. That's all the question. How do you feel about that? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Nathan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing, man? Great. You no, know, I just wanted to comment. I think it's kind of funny, you know, that, you know, I mean, A-Rod is, has been given all this money. You know these millions and millions of dollars, and it's you know, and it's funny that's coming out now that it's all about that it's steroids that made him this money, is the way I look at it. I mean, I'm pretty much a big fan of baseball, but you know, I think that it's funny that you look at it and you know they want to give asterisks to Barry Bonds. I mean, in all of that time, you know, in the early 2000s when it was you know the ball was more tightly wound or whatever the hell they were saying, I mean, I think it's just it's. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, why don't they put asterisks by everybody's numbers now? Yeah, remember these talks? Uh, do they used to talk about something called the dead ball era? Yeah, exactly. And then that was Come on! Time. Yeah. The dead ball, you mean not juicing? <laughs> well, I, I guess that's what it really did me. I, I mean, that's what it's, I mean, that's the way I look at it right now. Nathan, thank you for that. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Sam on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Ah, uh, how's it going, Tom? It's going okay, Sam. Much better to talk to you than those few callers before. That was pretty aggravating. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I I agree with the asterisk in a way. I just think this is terrible for baseball as a whole. That their golden boy is pretty much, you know, not now he's on steroids. When before they always had that to fall back on that A Rod is the best and he doesn't need steroids, and I just think that's crazy. I also want to say that I think that since his name came out, I think that the 104 other t- or 103 excuse me names that are on that list should be released as well, like Kurt Schilling said today. Well, I think they're going to come out anyway because uh, that list is now in the hands of the grand jury in the Balco case. True. And all that stuff's coming out. I mean, they already released Barry Bonds' testimony uh, the last few days. Mm-hmm. But I, and I uh, just, other I evidence. Only, I can only imagine what other names are. You know, 103, that's a lot of names. And a lot, it could be a lot of people that a lot of people don't want to hear, hear, you know. They want to think that they never did it. But I just think, I think it's horrible for baseball that it's all of a sudden coming out. And I want to know what you think about it. Well, I'm just amazed that people are surprised about it. That's all. I've been suspicious of this for a very long time, a very long time. And uh, the result I have found is not that I've stopped watching. I do watch. And it's not that I'm not a fan. I am a fan. But I don't have the same passion for it anymore. So I go to games. I root for the Dodgers. 
I uh, go to games in other cities. I enjoy going to the old ballparks. I was at uh, the last day Yankee Stadium was open in New York to see it go. I was at the last day of Shea Stadium in New York. Um, I'll get to the new ballparks next year because my brother is a fan of the uh, New York Mets. I'll go with him. I will uh, be there. Um, but to have the passion about it, like when I was a child and collected baseball cards or when I uh, was fascinated with the statistics of players and who batted 278 and who batted 337, I don't care anymore. It's all meaningless to me. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you. I, I came up in the same era where I was brought up with with baseball and everything, and I never really heard of the steroids until you know I got a little bit older and heard like Mark McGuire about it. But I, th- I think it tampers the game, and I think it tampers a lot of the numbers. Even though it is fun to go and see the games, I, I love doing that too. I'm a fan, but it does it does hurt the game knowing that you know maybe like a Greg Maddox isn't getting the kind of dessert, the, the kind of praise he needs for never testing positive for steroids, and then you get a guy like Roger Clemens. You know what I mean? Like, Maddox did it the right way, and there's a lot. There's only a few guys that you can say that about now. Well, you think of all the guys who, you know, their their skills eroded by the time they were 35, 36 years old, and they had to give it up. And then Roger Clemens, oh, what a wonder. Here he is, 44, and going to spring training again. Isn't that amazing? What a what an amazing feat that is! Look how great that is, and, and and comparing him to others who couldn't do it. Well, maybe the others were not willing to take the risks of taking steroids. I agree. I- you know, I, I got to say something else here. And as a broadcaster, it's it's only natural to think this way. He'll never mention it during a baseball broadcast, never, because he never does uh, bring up. Uh, uh, the dark side uh, when you're listening to a game. That's part of the fun of listening to his work. Uh, but I have to tell you that um, one person I would think would be heartbroken about this is Vin Scully, the the longtime play-by-play announcer for the Dodgers and someone I revere. Uh, he's not just somebody I, I like or enjoy listening to, uh, and he's not just a good baseball announcer. He's, in my mind, the best broadcaster there is and maybe ever was. And um, now here's somebody who's made it to 82 years old broadcasting. I think it's 82. And uh, never had to use steroids or anything else. Uh, He's just there on the adrenaline of enjoying what he does. And um, uh, the the exuberance he shows when he is talking about the eras of baseball and what happened in the past and his knowledge of the statistics and his knowledge of the intricacies of the game uh, uh, you have to imagine somebody like that just opens the paper or looks at a website and sees this A-Rod admission, and he has to be sad today. Has to be. And I can't blame him. And, uh, you know, there's other people who feel the way he does about baseball. Uh, my feeling for baseball, uh, being passionate about it, went away a long time ago. I'm still a fan. I still go, still love going to the ballpark. I do. But as far as what's going on in the field, or who belongs in there and who doesn't, eh. who was who was the leading hitter in the National League last year? I don't know. I don't know. And it doesn't matter. It used to matter, and now it doesn't. And I think that's the difference. Doesn't mean I don't go. Doesn't mean I don't spend money at the ballpark. I do. Just the way I would go spend money to see. Uh, I don't know. I might take my nephew to the circus. <laughs> But I wouldn't be uh, counting the number of uh, trapeze artists or the number of flips they did. Uh, the statistics are meaningless. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Alex Rodriguez has admitted that he used steroids for three years during his career, 2001 through 2004. What do you think about that? Actually, it's 2001. It's the seasons of 01, 02, and 03. And he claims he stopped right before the 04 season when the Yankees got him. And now now it would only be natural to be skeptical about that, that he stopped right in time for the criticism he would endure if he admitted taking steroids while he was with the Yankees. Now that the guy already lied to us, why would I believe anything he says? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here is Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Steve. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. You know, um, I played minor league baseball um, currently. 
And you just would not believe the amount of steroid use that goes on. In the minor leagues, all the way up to you see the big leagues, you hear about it. The coaches, the managers, the owners, they all call it vitamin S. They want you to get on that vitamin S. They want you to be the biggest, the best, the strongest, the most, the, the best arm. Um, they, they're looking. They don't care about your health. They want you to do it. So it doesn't surprise me that all these big-name guys who are, you know, putting fans in the seat are, are all doing it. They all do it, Tom. Well, here's my question for you. Now, I had read, and uh, maybe I read incorrectly, that the minor leagues were testing for steroids. In fact, well, one of the criticisms of the commissioner of baseball, Bud Selig, was that the minor leagues were testing for steroids, but that the major leagues were doing nothing about it. And is that true or no? They, they are, to a certain extent, testing the, uh, the minor leagues, but it's only a small percentage, about 10% of the actual testing, according to our trainers. Um, that's about 10% of the actual tests that are done are tested for steroids. Now, the others are tested for various drugs, the street drugs and everything, but it's a very small percentage when you talk about the number of minor league players there are. I mean, there's, there's seven, eight teams in, uh, in each franchise. Right, and uh, so what you're saying is that although 10% are tested, the odds are 9 to 1 you won't be tested, and so people will just take that chance and use them anyway. Exactly. Everybody wants money, Tom. That's all. That's what it's all about. Everybody wants the money, and and uh, they want to they want to be the number one, getting a two hundred and fifty two million dollar contract. Right. So, uh, do you think this is going to make any difference at all that A Rod admitted uh, using steroids for three seasons? Um, you know, what? unfortunately, I think it's going to tarnish his his, his name. Um, I think he's a great baseball player. Same with Barry Bonds. Um, it's hard to say about the Hall of Fame, and uh, it's hard to take away from what they've done, um, even though they have used steroids and admittedly, um, you know, admitted to that. But I, um, I still think they're unbelievable baseball players, and I, I, I don't think it should take away from what they're doing. To be honest, with you, I think that they've, they've, uh, they've set the bar, and they're, they're doing their job. Now, final question for you: uh, Do you prefer when someone like Alex Rodriguez admits to using steroids? Or when someone who most people believe use steroids stonewalls and says nothing or clams up or just out and out lies and says, no, I didn't use them. Well, which do you prefer? Uh, I would I would say I, I prefer the, the open and honest approach. I think everybody knows it, and uh, I think that they can respect him a little bit more now that he's, on, he's, he's uh, a little honest about it. Um, the guy like Barry Bonds, everybody knows, does it, but... Uh, he hasn't openly admitted it. I think that people lose respect for a guy like that. So um, it can go both ways. But I mean, I could, I, I still have a lot of respect for Alex, Alex Rodriguez and everything that he's done. What happens to the Hall of Fame now? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. But I think I, I would, I would vote for him. I think he's a great player. Um, I think there's, a, there's a lot of things that people do um, that should keep them out of the Hall of Fame. Um, but steroids. I think what would those things be? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I would, I, well, you know, I, I don't know, Tom. I, I, I would say illegal acts. I would say illegal acts um, like felonies. I would say certain felonies. That well, by the way, uh, get, getting steroids uh, without a proper prescription is a felony. Yeah, I mean, you got a point. You got a good point, Tom. I just, um, I think that their numbers should speak for themselves. I think, um, I think that they've, They've done a good job. They've, like I said, put people in the seats, and, and they are Hall of Famers. You can't argue that. They're, they're the best of the best. The guys we're talking about are the best of the best. But the aren't the statistics then meaningless? I, I, I don't know. Do you think that if 90% of the people are doing it, don't you think that um, they, they would, if, if steroids made that big of a difference, they would all be up putting up that kind of statistics, right? I, that's a good question. I, I don't know. So, I, I mean, I'm sure it makes a little bit of a difference, and it probably gives them a little bit of an edge, but so many people are doing it that um, the numbers they've put up over the years, I think they, they should speak for themselves. Now, let's take some people in ba I said I was asking you a final question, then I keep going. There, there was, uh, uh, of course, there are players who have been rumored to use steroids, and we don't know if they did or they didn't, but it's interesting how their performance has declined since steroids testing was implemented. I Absolutely. think of one player named uh, Paul LaDuca who used to play for the Dodgers. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Have you seen his numbers the last few years? Uh, yes, I have. And um, another one would be uh, Pudge Rodriguez, who I think has, has declined a little bit. 
you have to wonder. Uh, you do, and um, I'm sure they they the steroid policies or the the threat of an implementation of the steroid policies have have definitely scared some people away. Um, but for the most part, I still think that it's very prevalent in today's baseball. All right, Steve. Thank you very much for the call. We appreciate it. Come on, Tom like is one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. It's the Tom Likas show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Now with shorter commercial breaks, fewer commercials. And we take the call so fast, you're having speed. Just call 1-800-5800-TOM. Even you can get in. Try it. Isaac on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. So, um, I know steroids are, you know, illegal, performing the half scene, but, you know, I still think somebody has to go out there and work hard to get the ball. I mean, the steroids are going to be hitting the home runs. The player still has to be, you know, a good player to hit a ball. That way, that, that, that far. Yeah, but uh, let me tell you something. Uh, it's the difference between hitting uh, 25 or 30 home runs in a year and hitting 55 or 60. And that number of home runs can be the difference between winning the World Series and not going to the playoffs. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, mean, I, I understand what, what it does and how it does. But I mean, you still got to go out there and bust your ass to, you know, be, I mean, I'm sure there's been a lot of players that took in steroids and there, there's... You know, they're still not as great as, say, like A Rod or, you know, like a Barry Bonds or. Well, hey, know, but what in bad that people say that Barry Bonds used steroids? Well, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. But I mean, he, he, even since his rookie years, he's always been a, a solid hitter that can hit the ball a long way. The only difference is, you know. But the question is, would Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens still be playing baseball into their 40s if they were not on steroids? Probably not. Right, and so their lifetime statistics, like hitting the most home runs ever in baseball or uh, having so many strikeouts, are really meaningless, aren't they? Because these are guys who would never have been able to pitch or throw or hit as long as they did, and therefore would not be the life, uh, lifetime leaders of these categories. Isn't that right? Yeah, I mean, it goes, it goes both ways. I mean, you, st you still got to hit the ball. I mean, Getting a baseball itself is the hardest thing in baseball. But that's not the point. If if you have a guy who didn't use steroids and he had a certain uh, number of home runs, let's say his name was Babe Ruth yeah. or, or Hank Aaron, and then you got another guy who had to play until his early 40s to, to beat Hank Aaron's record, and he was only able to do it because he took steroids. Is it really fair to say that Barry Bonds was a better home run hitter than Hank Aaron? I, I mean, you know what? I still think Hank Aaron is an all-time leader. I mean, baseball has changed tremendously from... from so you're saying... Wait a minute. So you're saying the statistics are meaningless? Uh, they're, not, they're not meaningless. It's just that... You just said you consider Hank Aaron to be the home run leader. Yeah, I mean, I, I think... Well, how can that be? That Barry Bonds has hit more home runs than Hank Aaron. Yeah, well, Hank Aaron... I mean, Barry Bonds still hit the home runs, but I'm saying Hank Aaron... Back in those days, everything was clean. Baseball was baseball. But that's you know? not my point. You just said you consider him the leader. Yeah, I mean, but if, I, but if I, the I, statistics are meaningful, he's not the leader. Hank Aaron's number two, and Barry Bonds is number one. Yeah. You just contradicted yourself. Well, I know, I know I did, but I'm saying, I mean, you still gotta, you still gotta go out there and hit the ball. But I mean, so yeah, who I, is the who is the all time home run leader? <laughs> Now is Barry Bonds, but you know, you know the, what? The, the real, the real baseball players, which were back then, is probably Hank Aaron all time. Why would you say that? Because baseball was so different back then into it is now. But you just said that you, you believe in the statistics. Nah, I mean, I, I don't believe one hundred percent with the statistics, eh? So but, you're going to decide who the best home run hitter was. You're not going to let the statistics decide. Well, I mean. Who do you think is an all-time home run leader? Well, in my mind, it would be Hank Aaron because I believe Barry Bonds is a cheat. I also believe Roger Clemens is a cheat. I also know that Alex Rodriguez is a cheat. Yeah. I mean, And so their statistics mean nothing to me. Well, I mean, and Alex Rodriguez now, we already know he has lied in the past. 
So now I don't believe a word the guy says. I believe he's on steroids today. Oh, I, I, mean, I believe about 75% of the pictures are on steroids. I believe, I believe A-Rod's going to shoot up this spring. That's what I happen to believe. Oh, yeah. I mean, and uh, you, have, you have no problem with that? No, I mean... It's not that I have a problem, but I mean, what can we do about it? That's baseball now. What, what can we do about it? Wait a minute. You know, the Olympics, if you're caught doping, you're out. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's because the major league sees it as a business. I mean, they lose the best players, they ain't going to have no business. Well, guess what? The best players are going to stop doping if they know they're going to get tested reliably. Yeah, and I, and I really So they're not going to lose their business. They're not going to lose the best players. Yeah, I mean, I really do it. it I really do hope they do, because, I mean, baseball... Well, they say, you see, something could be done about it. They don't choose to do anything about it. Yeah, then they should, take, they, should, they should take a pay cut for taking steroids. They should take... Oh, you're all over the road, pal. Uh, let me grab one more here. Uh, let me say hello to Lance on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. What's going on, man? Not much. Um, I grew up uh, just outside of Baltimore, and I just kind of had two points about this whole conversation. Um, we used to have season tickets, so I would go to a lot of the Orioles games. And in the 90s, it was a really good time being an Orioles fan with Cal Ripken and the streak and all that. And the first is, you know, Rafi Palmeiro was obviously a steroid user now. But during the time, nobody seemed to mind that he was blasting, you know, all the home runs, like, during the season, and we were always in the race with the Yankees and all that. But now looking back, as soon as they found out he was on steroids, they were booing him throwing stuff at him, you know, like, when everything's going good, no one seems to have a problem with it. Well, because I think, obviously, people believed he was playing fairly. But he wasn't. Thanks a lot for the call. The Tom Likas Show.